Get a look at a Panasonic. This is an SLN P500. It's a portable CD player that Panasonic offered back in about 1992, somewhere in that range. This one doesn't play. Normally these things were thrown in the garbage. We don't do that here. We want to see if we can get this thing working, especially without putting any parts into it. Let's check it out. Here's a Panasonic Extra Bad Stereo. Portable CD SL NP500, eight times over sample. And this one here does not appear to be working. It's in fact showing that the battery is dead when in fact the battery is not dead. It's actually a fully charged battery. This in here, I've got brand new nickel metal hydrate batteries. And they are fully charged. And these units did operate on nickel metal hydrate batteries and alkaline, of course. But if we look at the battery voltage here, we'll see that our batteries are full at 1.39 volts. So there's no way that these batteries are low. And again, this unit was mod modern enough that uh, it would work off of rechargeable batteries, but for some reason, it's not working. It's telling me that the batteries are low. So it could be a problem with the unit itself. I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll clean the, uh, the battery terminals off just in case, just in case a, a battery in here went corroded at one time. We'll load the batteries again and see whether it still says the batteries are low because it's not gonna play. Yeah, it's still, it's still flashing that the batteries are low. And because of that, it's not going to actually even try to spin the disc. I don't know whether if I put alkaline batteries in, it's going to make any difference. It, it shouldn't. But we can try. Just in the event that the, the rechargeable batteries aren't strong enough. Okay, I've loaded some regular batteries into it now. Okay, now it's not showing that it's low on battery, but it's not spinning. So there's definitely a problem with this unit. And it's probably got to do with the spindle motor. So let's see if we can uh, make this piece of junk work. This is kind of just a fun little project. I don't even know where I got this. I found this somewhere. So that's what the inside of a Panasonic uh, CD player looks like. And that motor appears to be really quite stiff. If I turn this on, I'm just going to put the batteries back into this thing right at the moment. Now, if I turn this thing on, if I close the switch here, and hit the power button. You'll see that the laser lens tries to focus. Let's just see, what's the, first of all, if the laser's actually coming on. So we'll put the camera in night shot and verify that there is some light emitting from the laser. Will the camera focus? Yes, it will. So the laser is emitting light. So the unit, uh, the um, the motor does not appear to try to spin. That's broken there too. The uh, shock absorber is coming apart. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and make this motor spin. It's the red and black wires because the two white wires go to the detection switch to detect when the laser is in the home position and the white and blue wires go to the traverse motor. We know that that works. 
but it's just this other motor and this is quite stiff. So I'm thinking if I can apply power, I'm just gonna unplug the rest of this and we'll remove the laser. I just don't want to damage this, this uh, ribbon cable here. I know I should be putting the jumper on here as well before I do it, but what the heck. I'm supposed to short the laser diode out. I just want to make sure I won't touch anything around here. I just want to see if I can get this motor that appears to be quite tight to spin. Did that just so I have something to clip on to. That motor sounds pretty uh, pretty bad. It's making a lot of noise. Let's spin the crap out of it. I think this traverse motor is where the problem is on this thing. It seems to be pretty... Uh, it's either that or it's... It's, um, it's either the bearing is bad or the, the reel table is, is too low. And it's... It's riding on the... See if that spins any better. Ah, that's a little better. That's actually a lot better. That actually might work. What happens is through repeated loading and unloading of the disc, and especially when the the uh, the door gets slammed, is that the clamp clamping down on this actually pushes it down, and then it starts to make contact with the with the with the base and can't turn. And by the way, it tells you the colors, right? It says tray um, are blue and red and white. It has it tells the motor. It says spin and traverse and reset. Or the uh, the numbers on here, the, the labeling. So it makes it easy to put this thing back. See if it'll detect the disc and try to spin this time. Aha! It's going to 
try and spin. Let's just put the top on it. I may have to put the screws in it just to hold it together. I'm a little too low and it was a little too high before. Kind of a sweet spot you have to set this to so that it will spin without without rubbing. It's still rubbing. Where is it rubbing? It's probably that uh, rubber grommet that's, that's worn out on this side. Is it playing? The line out's playing on one channel, how about the uh, headphone output playing on both channels. I have a feeling it's rubbing on the edge here. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to pop this thing apart again. I'm going to see if I can maybe switch around a couple of those uh, of the rubber bumpers there. Because the one that was closest to the motor, which is where the weight will be, was kind of broken, was split. So I'll switch one of the bumpers around with one of the other ones and see if that will... I think they're all damaged. They're all worn out, it feels like. You see what I mean? They're they're worn, they're they're broken.
there's pins on this side that go into the top side of these to, to hold the uh, pickup in place. So I was wondering if they may not have been properly seated before, so we'll just try that again. It works. That's the stupid, that's the silly plug. This, um, this adapter plug is not a very good one. Okay, let's just try this other one. See if this one works any better. Ah, both channels. Yeah, this unit you know, here is because of the shape. The shape of the actual three and a half millimeter is slightly different than if you look at the two of them, if I can get them both in focus here, and for whatever reason, this one here sometimes doesn't make a good connection. And you get one channel cutting out. Probably hurt to clean that, that jack. Anyway, it's working. Um, I have to take it apart again only because my little switch here is not lined up. To set the, the base control, extra base, it's not lined up with the, the uh, switch below, so we'll just take it apart one more time, make sure the switches are lined up. And then that will do it for this thing. So when you get one of these Panasonic units in, you find your, yourself digging up an old portable player that you had for years and it doesn't spin, check out the uh, spin motor because it's, uh, it's quite a common quite a common problem on these. You know, the problem over here is just this this uh, little cap is not lining up with the with the switch here. That one is. This other one's not quite lining up, so I just have to lift the board up a bit in the corner here, I think, and, uh, and get the switch aligned. There we go. Now it works. Hold switch. There we go. Works. Make sure it plays all the tracks. I think there's about 20 tracks on this thing. Track number 20. There we go. Working. It's not actually sounding too bad either. Now I have myself a little Panasonic portable CD player to add to my collection of uh, vintage audio gadgets that work. And it's complete because I've even got the battery case for it. It's the first thing that people lose is the battery case. Clean this thing up, make it look like a million bucks, and I got myself a nice little collector's piece from a bygone era when everybody carried around little portable CD players with them.
this one actually had a bracket that you could mount it in the car and that screw affixed it to the bracket so that it would slide into your car and uh, you could uh, listen to tunes on the go and that could be another use for this if I want to listen to CDs in my car I don't have a CD player this might be an option thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one real soon bye for now